Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Patrick with Stacking Layers. Today's video, I'm gonna go over how to set up CAN bus on the Big Tree Tech Manta M8P using a CB1 so we can utilize the CAN bus outputs that the version 1.1 uh, implemented to hook up extra CAN bus devices like this, the uh, EBB42. So if that's what you're looking to do, that's probably why you click on this link. So let's jump onto the computer and try to get this going. Okay, here we go. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna be assuming that you already have the image installed on your SD card and you already got that set up with Wi-Fi or whatever peripheral you need to get it going and you are able to SSH into the CB1. So I am starting from that point. If you haven't been able to, to do that, uh, you can drop a comment down below and maybe I can try to help you out. Um, the uh, Big Tree Tech, uh, or yeah, the, the GitHub that they have for the CB1 is pretty straightforward and I haven't had a problem getting it working, so should be easy to do. <clears throat> uh, so the next step would be, we're gonna need to get um, CAN boot. Now this is not a requirement, but I do recommend using CAN boot. Um, what CAN boot is, is a uh, bootloader that gets put onto the, um, to the EBB. You can install it onto the Manta also, but I feel that's kind of not necessary since the CB1 is directly on the board, um, and we can use some commands to flash without having to do too much. You do have to press some buttons to get it into a certain mode, but other than that, there's not a lot to be doing. But with the uh, the little um, EBB board, um, since it'll be kind of wired up in, inside of a hot end or whatever, it's probably easier to use CAM boot, and that gives you the option of flashing new firmware stuff without having to press any buttons. Um, so since they can can be a little bit difficult to get to, it's better to just use CAN boot. That's my opinion. So that's what we're going to start with. We're going to install CAN boot, set that up, and install it onto the EBB using another program, um, which I have my little cheat sheet here, so I try not to uh, lose track and make a 10-hour video here. Um, but we use these, the um, uh, STM32 CAN programmer. Uh, sorry, Cube programmer. Um, this is a... A program designed for actually flashing firmware or bootloaders or whatnot to uh, the STM chips. So this is official from ST. Um, so yeah, you'll have to download that program, get it installed if you don't already have that. Um, if you do, that's great. You probably are going to be familiar with doing this and you're just missing a problem of why can't I install an extra CAN bus item to the uh, Manta MAP. So get that installed and then once that's done, you can come back if you haven't already come back. <laughs> um, and then yeah, so this is what we're going to do. So first off, what we're going to do is to uh, make sure we have CAN boot um, repository installed. And that is the simple thing here. And I I'll put these, um, this kind of cheat sheet stuff or whatever, the, the links and things down into the description. So it'll be easy for you to copy paste if you want to do it that route. Um, so basically, all I'm going to do here is just make sure I'm in my uh, home directory and then uh, clone over the uh, CAN boot um, repository. So get in there, copy that, put it there, and enter. Oh, what did I do? Oh yeah, <laughs> I already have it. So basically, <laughs> I can install it onto the what it's already installed. Here, I'll show you. PLS in there. There's my can boot. So yeah. Anyways, yeah, it'll install if if you don't already have it. So once you get that downloaded, then you want to go into the can boot. Uh, uh, directory there, so that's uh, CD uh, can boot, um, and then what you want to do, um, it, if you're familiar already with making Clipper um, uh, configurations, it's basically the same thing, only you do it inside here with the can boot folder. So the way you do that is to make and uh, menu config. Uh, config, and then it's going to look. Again, if you're familiar with the Clipper setup, you're going to see this. It's going to look just like the same, um, you know, make menu config, pretty much is with everything. So it's going to give you your your setup. But this is for CAN boot, as you can see here at the top. I don't know if there's a highlight. Yeah, see, it's a CAN boot configuration. So this is configuring your um, uh, your bin file for setting a bootloader onto the EBB. So with the EBB. Of course, you're, if depending on which version of EBB you have or if you're using a different type of CAN boot device, it's going to be dependent to that. Um, but with this one, it is the uh, STM32 processor, which is the uh, 32G0B1 uh, on mine. 
So you make sure to do that. If you're not familiar with these menus, all you do is you press up and down to navigate and then left and right. So uh, right goes into this selection. And then as you can see here, I have this one selected. Press right again and that selects it. Same thing here. So that's my board, select it. Um, the next step would be right here on the build can boot uh, deployment application. Um, you do use that. That's gonna help you to, if I'm remembering correctly, what it's gonna do is allow you to use the um, the commands in can boot to actually just flash things. So it, it, it makes the first eight kilobytes um, for the bootloader. So make sure that's on, otherwise it'll say do not build. Um, so leave it on there. Clock reference, leave it on that for this board. Um, unless your, your board is different, change it to whatever your board needs. It should all be documented, so just check the documents of your board. Um, for this, I'm gonna be using the communication interface of CAN bus, of course. Um, and uh, on mine, the pins are PB0 and PB1. And as you can see, there's several different options, so your pins may vary. Definitely double check that. Um, leave the offset start to eight kilobytes, and um, I'm using the, the default uh, 500,000 uh, bus speed. Um, something important with these bus speed here, make sure it is the same across all devices. If it's not, they're gonna be, there's gonna be communication problems and uh, they probably won't communicate to each other because they will be speaking different speeds, different, kind of almost like different languages in a sense, or yeah, they, they just won't be able to understand each other. Um, so yeah, everything else kind of leave the stock what it is. Um, I haven't changed anything. So yeah, just leave it there and then you'll hit Q for quit. And if you've changed something, it'll ask you um, if you change and you hit Y for yes um, to save it. So that's what we'll do there. And then once you're back here, um, you're gonna want to first, uh, you're gonna make that bin file or make the whole all the files you need to flash. So um, the first thing I like to always do is to make clean. And this is just to make sure that it gets rid of any um, uh, previous uh, configurations or anything that's in there so it just gives us a clean start um, normally you should run that one more time yeah you'll see this creating a symbolic link uh, out um, board so this is basically this linking up this um, out full uh, uh, directory <clears throat> for your board um, once you have that then you do make alone just like that just make enter and this is going to start making the files that we need to flash over um, technically it's only one file we need um, this is just various different, um, yeah, files. I, I can't remember exactly what all of this is for, but it's it's for various ways of configuring things, getting stuff set up. Um, it's basically uh, compiling a bin file. And this right here, that cam boot bin is what we're gonna be using. So now it's done here. Once you get back to your your prompt there, you're, you're ready to go. So this is the, this is the file that we need can boot dot bin um, but we need to extract that from the uh, CV one now um, there's tons of different ways of doing it if you already know how to use like for instance CP or whatever to get copy right out of this you can do that you can use command prompt you can use all sorts of different variable uh, various things <laughs> I like to use a uh, win uh, SCP just because it's easy <laughs> so I'll use that and then the way you use it let's see I think I think uh, I think that's the wrong IP address. Let's let's do a new one. Uh, let's see, one nine two dot one six eight. Now, of course, your IP is going to be different. These are your just local IPs. So make sure to put yours in there. I think it's on thirty two right now. And the username default username is BQ. If I can spell that right, BQ. And the default password is also BQ, but I've changed this one just for messing around. And, uh, like that. And then we log in. If you see a message like this, it's just letting you know that you've been previously uh, set up and um, you've changed the, um, the address or whatever. Basically, like if you were to use the CB1 and then you go and make a new SD card and put it in there, it's gonna pop up a message like this, just saying, you know, hey, wait a minute, the host that you were using is not uh, matching to the previous time you used it. Are you sure you wanna do that? So yeah, I do. So here we are, we're inside, and 
we're going to be getting the file out of the can boot directory and it's in the out directory inside there and we find it right there can boot and we're just going to copy it over I'm just going to copy it to my desktop um, you copy it wherever you want just remember where it is that you copy so just drag it over here this is already on my desktop as you can see so yes there's already one there I'm going to overwrite that and that's it that's all we need to do with this part so we can minimize that or close it out and then we need to open up uh, STM uh, Q programmer so let's get that opened and before we do too much on here while that's opening I'll use my phone and show you what we need to do on the EBB because there is um, uh, yeah you have to put a jumper in place and you press some buttons to get it to start talking to this uh, programmer here okay so let's get that going okay so here we are with the EBB I've already plugged in this side of the USB just to make it easy because I'm doing this one-handed so the first thing we need to do besides plug, plug that in you got these two little pins right next to the USB I don't know if it's gonna zoom in on those let's see I will work on getting better quality videos recording here so yeah I think you can see those there you go they, they right there in the center so those two pins if you didn't know that's for jumping the power from the USB input to the board since I'm not plugged in here yet for power. So let's see, I get these on there. You use this little jumper to jump those pins and that's gonna allow power over USB. So now we can plug it in. And when I plug it in, you'll notice, or you may or may not notice, I do have my sound on. There was no USB plugged in sound, the typical Windows sound, but you see they're lit up. So the board is being powered, but in order to get it to uh, communicate via USB, you have to hold down, there's two buttons here. We have a boot, which is this one above that blue light, and then another white button there. That's the reset button. So we have to hold down that button up there, the boot button. And while you continue to hold that, you tap the reset button. And you should hear the USB connect. And then once you hear that sound that it's connected, you can let go of the boot button. So let's see if I can do this with my fingers here in the way. So I'm gonna hold down that button and then tap the reset. And if you were able to hear that, the USB connected. So now it's in what's called DFU mode and that's allowing the uh, the computer to talk to the to the chip. So we'll get back to the to the computer and show you how to continue. Okay, so now we here we are here back at the computer. And with the uh, Q programmer opened, why is this? Let's get this, there we go. Um, so what we first have to do is connect. And as you can see right now, it's saying no DFU detected. Um, first part in this blue area, make sure it does say USB and that it's not on any of these other things. So we wanna connect USB. And then you hit over here, the refresh, and it should automatically connect. So it's on USB one and it has the serial number of, of that device. So it, it should connect. Um, if it doesn't, maybe you can look to see if you have any other devices plugged in and unplug them. Just have the EBB plug in. Um, it's best to just do it with one USB thing plugged in at a time. So anyways, once you get that in there, then you hit the green button here, connect, and it should show you something in this box. Um, now, I've already gone and done the CAN boot on this device. I'm going to show you, do it again anyways just to show you, but um, what your readout is here, it may vary than what this is. So. Anyways, it'll be something. It could be all Fs if it's a blank chip. It could be just a bunch of Fs and then like some weird Ys over here, um, which I suppose I could show you in a minute here. Um, but yeah, as long as you see it connected and you see, you know, now you have it says disconnect over there at the green, um, then you're good. And what we're going to do next is go down to the second tab here. This is going to be your erasing and programming field. Um, the first thing we're going to do, which may sound scary, but it's, it's good to do is a full chip erase. This is going to erase anything off or everything off of your um, uh, your little STM chip down there on the on the the MCU that you're going to be programming. So you do the full erase. It's going to ask you, "Are you sure?" Yes, just do it. And uh, it's letting you know that it could um, it won't be able to do anything that's flash protected, which I don't think is an issue on this one, anyways. So yeah, now that's erased, and I'll show you. <clears throat> now you can see here how it's all F's and Y's. That means it's a blank chip. It's, it's waiting, there's nothing on anything here. So that's good. So yeah, back in that tab. Um, so up here is the file path. This is what we're gonna be flashing. I already have it as my uh, my camboot.bin from the desktop. 
Um, otherwise, you browse to wherever you save that folder. Leave everything else the same. You know, just make sure you verify programming, all that good stuff. We don't need to worry about much changing much here. And all you do is come right here to start programming. And voila, that's it. <laughs> it happens that fast. It's a very tiny file. So um, it, it just happens in a split second. If it starts hanging up, if it's taking a long time, you're here sitting several seconds or even a minute, something's not right. You probably pick the wrong, double check that you made, you pick the right file or something. Make sure that the connection is good, but you should get a verified success um, like you saw within split second. Um, it lets you know, click OK, downloads complete. OK, all is good. You can verify just by coming back here and, uh, oh, where was that? I think if you come in to read, yep, and then it'll read the chip again, and there it is. So now you can see everything's back on there. And that's it. That, that's good. Now we got uh, CAN boot on there, which is basically it's already now a CAN bus system. It will send and read for CAN bus. But we're going to do a little bit more. But first, before we do more with the EBB, we need to get CAN boot set up on, or sorry, not CAN boot, but CAN bus set up on the Manta M8P. So let's do that now. Let's close this. I'm going to uh, disconnect. Uh, if, you, if you tap the reset button on the EBB, that will disconnect it. So as you can see there, probably would have been a good idea to hit disconnect first. <laughs> uh, I do recommend hit disconnect first before disconnecting. I probably should not have done that, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, we don't need that anymore. <clears throat> if I run into problems, then you'll know that's why, because I didn't hit disconnect, but I don't think it's not reading anything, so it should be fine. But now that's disconnected, and now we're going to jump back out of, because right now we're still in the CAN boot um, thing, and we're going to jump out of that. So just hit CD, and you're back into your root directory. directory. So as you can see, if you hit LS, that'll list everything in there. We're back in here. <clears throat> but now we want to do a Clipper uh, config, and we're going to make the com Clipper config for the M8P. So what you do is CD into Clipper. And then uh, you do your make menu config. Did I do it this way? No, menu. I did. Menu config. There's a little tip if, if you didn't know. If you hit tab while you're typing these things out, if it's something you've already typed out, or if it's a, like a file or or a directory that's already in that where you are, it'll auto populate most of the time. So you can hit tab for like if you do the first three letters and hit tab, it'll finish it out for you. There's a little tip. <clears throat> so anyways, we're here in the Clipper. Now you can see we're doing a Clipper firmware configuration, no longer can boot. And for the Manta M8P to communicate to the uh, to the uh, CB1, or sorry, to the CB1, to the Manta M8P, I guess both ways, you have to first uh, set it up as a can boot bridge. So we're going to do that. Um, luckily with these two boards, the... the <clears throat> The MAP and the EBB, they have the same um, STM uh, 32GO uh, G0B1 chip, so <laughs> that's nice. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, we're going to be doing that. We're going to set the bootloader. Do we set the bootloader on this one? I think we do. Let's see if I put that on there. Uh, yeah, we did put the bootloader on that one. Bootloader offset. So put that on there. Same crystal, and then what we're doing here is all the way down at the bottom, we're using the USB to CAN bus bridge. Um, this is going to allow, kind of like um, when you do the, uh, if you've seen the USB to CAN um, extra little items that you either have like a hat you put on top of the Raspberry Pi or the CB1, um, or where you plug into the USB and then hook your CAN devices to those. It's kind of like the same thing, only it's built in because the CB1 is built onto the board. So it's yeah, it's designed already built in, which is kind of nice. So you make sure to do that first, because if you don't set up the USB uh, to CAN part here um, and just do a CAN bus interface, then it's not going to communicate. The next thing is going to be on here. We have to set our pins. And for this one that we have, uh, the Manta M8P version 1.1 uses uh, pins, CAN bus pins on PD12 and PD13. So set that up. Again, uh, I have the 500,000 CAN bus speed because that's what I use with the other one. 
Um, and I believe if you use the stock, um, the uh, CB1 image, when you first built your image, then that's going to be the, the default uh, speed anyway. So that makes it easy too. So that's all we need to do there. You hit Q. And as you can see, this is what I was talking about. If you have a new setup, it'll ask you if you want to save it or not. Um, so yes, save that out. And then the same thing, make clean just to make sure that there's nothing hung over from the last time and it create a symbolic link and then make and this will make the uh, the clipper firmware to put onto the Manta M8P and once this is done we're going to use a command um, this is why I was saying that's kind of nice and easy with the board being on um, all in one <clears throat> Which I guess you can do this too if you're plugged in USB, but we have this make flash uh, thing So you can put the board into DFU mode, which I will show you here and then run this command and it'll Send it over right on the board So it's almost done Something I do want to point out, uh, these things are going pretty quick, but the reason I didn't show the uh, setting up from, from scratch from a blank SD card is because there's two parts that take a very long time. <laughs> um, the first one, obviously, is is burning your image. So you can use Raspberry Pi Imager or um, uh, Belina Etcher. Um, get that installed. But then uh, the very first thing to do before you go through any of this is to run the, um, the APT uh, Git update and upgrade. Um, did I even put that in here? Let me see. I'll put that on there too. Yeah, if you run run this, because if you don't, there there's some weird things that I've noticed that happen um, to where like it acts as though it's losing Wi-Fi connection and it'll like, it'll just knock you out of uh, using PuTTY or whatever your SSH in, or you'll get disconnections on your Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So it's actually still connected, but for some reason it doesn't show as it is. But if you just log right back in, you're on again. You don't have to repower anything. So make sure to, to do that. I just wanted to point that out while I was thinking about it. <laughs> um, but this takes a very long time for the first one because there's a lot of things it needs to update. There's been a lot of changes in the last couple months um, since the image was made. Um, a lot of fixes and security fixes and a whole bunch of stuff. So it can take a little while. So that's why I didn't do this. I, I did this ahead of time before making this video. But definitely update everything. So now we got that clipper bin and we don't have to use anything special to get that out, but we do have to go back over to the board and put it into DFU mode. So let's do that and I'll show you. Okay, so here we are at the board. Um, I already have the CAN bus line plugged in, but it's not plugged in there. So this is, this is just the data line and then I got the power directly from the board or from the power supply. It's just sharing the same power input to there. Anyways, so that's why that's there. But what we need to do is the same thing kind of what we did on the uh, EBB board is use these two buttons here. So top one, as you can see, says boot two, and the other one is reset. So you gotta hold the boot two, and while you continue holding that, tap that one, and that'll get into DFU mode. Now, unfortunately, there's no audio feedback or any other type of feedback on here, so you won't hear it do anything, but you may notice this little light in here flash, but let's see if it does it. So I'm gonna try to do this one fingered. So I'm holding down the boot and then I rock over. No, no flash. Sometimes it's a very, like, n not even a millisecond of a flash uh, I've noticed when I do it. But anyways, the only way to know that if it worked is to run the command that I just highlighted and showed you. And uh, if it works, then you know that you got it in. If it didn't, if it doesn't see the DFU mode device, then come back over here and make sure you do that. Hold boot, tap reset, then let go of boot. That's the sequence. So let's go back to the computer. Okay, so now we're here in the computer again, and all we have to do is run that command, which I will go back and double, or show you again so you can see. It's right here. And this is gonna take the, um, the that firmware uh, clipper.bin file that we just made and flash it to the, uh, to the Manta. So put that in there and go. And as you can see here, it's loading up. So that's good. If you don't see it doing that, 
where it's downloading, then that means you're not in the DFU mode. You have to go try to do that. Hold down the boot and click reset again. So as you can see right here, no, oh, this one, file downloaded successfully. That's good. That's what you want to see. That means it was done. This rest of it where it looks like it didn't work, so it says error and failed to flash and all this. Um, I'm not sure exactly why it's doing that, but it did flash, just so you know. If you see this, don't be alarmed. Don't try to flash again and again and again. Um, I think what it's doing is, with, with this board specifically, it, it jumps out of DFU mode or it doesn't fully reconnect after it downloads and flashes the firmware. And so it tries to um, get the status and see, you know, did it work or is it still in DFU mode? Um, but it can't. It doesn't. It doesn't get that response. So it says, "Oh, failed um, to flash." But it did. It worked. Um, and you'll know because what you can do now is check it. So you can see, get your UUID by uh, using this code. Just copy that. Uh, this is this the stock Clipper uh, uh, CAN bus query. So you can do that right click to paste into your thing if you didn't know that already if you do control c it'll format it weird and not work so that's just another handy tip just right click and it'll automatically copy in so it should check and there it is so now i found can, can bus uh, device one of them and the application is running as clipper now we also need to do that not just to make sure that it worked but to get this number this is your uuid this is, um, if you've already done Clipper with using a serial for USB, this is the CAN bus version of that. So it's just a short uh, serial number for the um, CAN bus ID. So you want to copy that, and you can hold Shift and Control in PuTTY and then C, and that'll copy. Or you can right-click, but if you right-click, it'll also copy it down into your line. So you have to delete that. Um, and then, like you see I've done here, make sure to... Uh, copy that somewhere where it's easy to access because you're going to um, to need these uh, UUIDs um, when you set up Clipper, um, the, the printer config file. So make sure to label it so you know what it is because we're going to have this one and as you can see down here I have my EBB version. So uh, keep those going, uh, keep those uh, organized so you know. You will need to reference them. So anyways, now we have the board running in CAN bus um, and it's communicating so if you were to go into clipper and set it up which do not do I do have to point that out do not do any clipper setup yet until you have both boards or all boards whatever boards you want to be set up with CAN bus get them all set up before you'd set up clipper there's a little weird quirk that uh, if you set up for instance if I go right now and set up the MAP before I set up a US uh, the CAN bus on this guy the EBB then for whatever reason, it won't show me any more CAN bus devices that I set up for that are new, um, because now Clipper takes over. I think what's what's going on is Clipper starts the service starts and then it and then it attaches to uh, CAN zero, which is the CAN bus um, uh, service or whatever in the background, and so it kind of like locks it up because it's using it, and so it can no you can no longer connect to it. So you have to shut down the services or disconnect the uh, the Clipper um, printer config file to stop it from doing that. So I recommend don't set up Clipper yet until you have all of the UUIDs for your devices you're setting up. So now we're going to do the EBB and it's a very similar thing. First we have to make another Clipper uh, configuration for that. So let's get back into PuTTY and we can do another uh, uh, make menu config. No. There. And then this one is the same chip, so again, very easy. Uh, but we do not have this communication interface. Um, the EBB that I have uses, uh, what was it again? PB, yeah, PB0, PB1 for communication interface. Uh, where did I write that? I'm just going to make, make sure, double check I did that right again. Um, yeah. PB0, PB1 is what I use for mine. Again, don't use these if it's not the exact same board. They, they have different pins, so double, double check your, your board um, specifications. So there it is for that. And again, that 500,000 speed to match everybody else. And they 
quit yes and then uh, make it clean and run it one more time just to make sure there we go I like to see that it says the created symbolic link it's just it, probably not necessary but it gives me a, a confirmation that it did it and now we do the make and again let's take a little bit and this is where we're going to use um, <clears throat> can boot to flash the this firmware to the EBB. So like you saw with what we did with using Q Programmer, um, we had to press the buttons to get into that mode. We no longer need to do that. And that's what the can boot is, is so nice, or what's so nice about having can boot installed as a bootloader. Because now we can just use a command on here, which you'll see in a second. A few, sec <clears throat> a few seconds. Um, yeah, and then uh, it just makes updating so much easier. Almost done. There we go. So now what we want to do um, is get out of Clipper. So we're going to uh, change directory into a can boot. Can I not do it this way? No. Do it this way. Speedy can boot. There we go. So now we're in our can boot directory. But before we go any further on here, actually, that was kind of dumb because I need to power down the device. I recommend powering down before you plug in your EBB um, or any other CAN bus device. But make sure that you power down before plugging in because hot plugging on some of these things can cause issues. Um, so you remove the USB cord, you remove the little jumper cable, and get CAN bus or get your CAN line plugged in for to power everything up. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. One thing I wanted to point out. Make sure to do a shutdown before powering off, always. Um, yeah, maybe some people don't do that and they never have problems, but shut down your your host computer before powering off. It just reduces the chance of corrupting uh, any of your directories in your, your system file. So I'm gonna hear, here I am with this, it was shut down now, so it doesn't count down, because if you don't just do such shut down, it could uh, do like a countdown after so many minutes. So pseudo shut down now, and then you can power off. Okay, here we are back in the CB1, SSH back in. So now we're going to get into can boot folder uh, directory. Um, and then we're going to flash over using, uh, let's see, we're going to be using. <laughs> Where did I put that? There we go. This right here. So we have this little script that it's going to run, and this is this is built in. This isn't anything you have to do except for just copy this uh, line here, and this is all actually uh, put in the, uh, the the can boot uh, GitHub repository. So you got all the instructions there. I'm just doing this so you can see it nice and easy. So let's copy that. I'm not copying that last part, your UUID, because that's the UUID that um, we're going to be copying from the EBB. Um, and actually, yeah, how did you get that, right? I forgot to show you that part. So you're going to want to first get your UUID. So you use this command, or you can use the Clipper one. Either one works. Um, you use your cam boot. If you're, since I'm already in the folder, I'm just going to use that. This is going to get you or check for that you have connected your USB, sorry, EBB properly using CAN boot. It's going to reset everything, and as you can see, now we have two CAN boot devices, or sorry, two CAN bus devices. One of them is Clipper, so that's your Clipper board that you've already made. If you remember, we had the uh, first one was just CAN boot. So this is going to be your EBB. And this is why I tell you it's it's important to um, write down your your devices, your UUID, because after we get Clipper on here, they're going to look identical except for these numbers, and there's no real identification to tell you what is what. So if you have a bunch of them, say if you do three or four different devices here, and they all say application Clipper, you're not going to know who's who. So you're not going to be able to say, okay, now boot this uh, UUID. So 
yeah, that's why I say definitely write them down, make a list so you don't get lost. So we're going to uh, copy that one since it's obvious. It's the CAN boot device. We have not put Clipper on it yet. Now we can come down and use this code here. It's actually what I'm going to do is just for sake of easiness, I'm going to paste that there. <laughs> So you copy that and then put it in to there. So this is saying to use the cam boot script, uh, cam boot script of Flash and CanPy. Um, and then it's saying where to get that file from. Is it going to do that? Yeah. So as you see here, it's taking it out of the Clipper full um, Clipper directory, Clipper out, and then the Clipper dot bin, and then it's going to flash it to the U right there. Means the UUID, and then followed by the UUID. So that's what all this is. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see all in one line. All right. So that's why we say make note of these guys. OK, so yeah, hit enter and it should, as you see, it sends the bootloader saying basically what it does is it pushes those buttons for you via software <laughs> is the easiest way to put it. Um, and so you can see up here, it says attempting to connect, and then it, it does the connection, all that good stuff. It actually does connect for or check for which nodes are on the system and find you, your UUID. Make sure that it's the right type, verifies the connection, and flashes it over. And then it verifies, gives you the code that it's been complete. If you want to double check that, I don't remember how to do that at the moment, but not really necessary. But anyways, now you're successful and you can run that uh, query again. And you should now see both are on Clipper. So query complete, both devices are Clipper. So that's it. Now the rest is all about setting up printer configurations. And I'm thinking if you've come this far with wanting to do CAN bus systems and setups and stuff like that, it's really cool, great. If this is your first time ever doing any type of uh, Clipper work, <laughs> that'll be very uh, impressive to jump in right away and just do it like that. It's not impossible, of course. Very easy, as you can see. Um, but I think most of you are, are fairly familiar with setting things up, so I'm not going to go over that into this video because this one is already now going to be way too long as usual, as, has, as these videos are. I'm trying to cut down the mumbling and the uh, rambling on about stuff, so hopefully... <laughs> this is getting better but uh, yeah if you do have any further questions um, like I said you're gonna have to set up your printer config for your different devices instead of using um, the serial the USB serial um, for your MCU you're gonna now use uh, UUID CAM boot uh, CAM bus UUID and that's what these numbers are for okay so that's it hopefully this was very helpful for you and it solved any issues that you may have been having trying to get more than one board to show up. Um, I know may, my main reason for making this video is, is I've seen quite a bit of uh, people having issues with that where they can get the, the the Manta or some of the other boards reading and showing a UUID, but then after that there is no more. Uh, even though they can try to set it up, it doesn't work. It doesn't show anything. It'll just say query complete but not show anything. So. The, the biggest thing that I can find out why is because of that weird issue where Clipper takes over when you set up your first device on it. And so it no longer will read or show you the other devices. It's the, it's the, the only thing I can figure out because um, I did experience it the very first try. And then when I redid everything, I just decided just to get all the stuff set up before I configured Clipper. And it, as you can see, went real smooth. So that's my tips. That's my how-to. Um, hopefully, again, hopefully this was helpful. Any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments. Get some discussions down there too. If you see anybody else, comment in and I haven't replied yet. Definitely jump in and try to help if you can. Let me know what you think. If you like these videos, I know they're long and boring for kind of really, you know, they're really nerdy, but I figure I want to continue diving into this type of stuff so you can see really in depth, step by step, what it should look like and how it should work as opposed to just following the guide. You know, I could have just put this, which I'm sure there is tons already out there. You could just put the, these guides in there and say do it this, this, and this. But if you run into a, a glitch or something that didn't work right or don't know why is it is it taking long because there's some of these things that take 
like 15, 20 minutes and it just stays like like you see right now and nothing looks like it's happening. So you think, oh great, it froze or it's broken, now I gotta go reset. Well, if you reset or pull the power or try to do it again, you start the whole process over again. So <laughs> that's just the way that works. So sometimes you do have to be patient. But anyways, I'm not gonna make this video any, any longer now. I am starting to ramble. So let's cut this off. And again, hopefully this was helpful. Share it, like it, comment, all that good stuff. And until next time, happy printing. Thanks for watching. Okay, well, I couldn't resist. I had to show you it working. So as you see, I, <clears throat> I configured Clipper now with those things. And here we are. We got the CB1, we got the EBB, and the MAP. All three boards are there communicating. We'll get into the machine and you can see them more in depth. So there we are. So you got the host computer, which is the CB1. And then we got the EBB CAN bus and the MCU, which is also on CAN bus. Um, so yeah, that's, everything's going. And the way I set it up, I, I make a, a, a separate config for each one and then just include them. So I have the MAP and whatnot, and then I just use the includes. So it's a little more clean in here. Um, but yeah, that's how I do that. Let's get out of here. And for, uh, as you can see, for the MAP, this is what I was talking about. So typically you'll have this serial dev system set up if you're using USB plug-in. Um, but here with Canvas, we use that. And there's the EBB, or sorry, the UUID number for the M8P. And then, then this EBB configuration, same thing for that one. So that's it. Now these are just the generic files. I just threw them in there to, to get it set up. So again, you know, you know how to set it up. But yeah, I wanted to show it working and they are as you can see they're set up and uh, I will go over to the camera there we are I got thermistors so I don't get any errors it's running through CAN bus through there and touching the thermistors to get them warmed up if my hands aren't freezing so you should see them warming up and there we go 31 degrees. Not terribly cold today. Anyways, so that's it working. Again, thanks for watching. Just wanted to show you that.